It's off to a great start this morning. I thought, yep, got it all nailed, got my, got my preach together, and get halfway here and I'm going, ah, where are my glasses? Because I know from previous experience, you get up here, if you think you can see, okay, getting the lights, nah, can't see a thing. So instead of being the smart one and ringing, going, oh, can you guys bring my glasses? Turned around, raced back home, raced back to church here, ever so slightly stressed. But apart from that, it's all good. I thought I should introduce myself in case this is your first time here. My name's James and my wife Bev, we're part of the team here and in our senior pastor's absence, they're away on holidays, I believe they got back yesterday afternoon, they've left Bev in charge. Um, Because they're people of faith but hang on, there's a limit to everything and no one's going to ever leave me in charge, let's be honest. Well... If this is your first time with us, a really special welcome to you. It's um, Whether you're online or here in the house, it's just so great that you can come along. And I'm just reminded whenever I rarely tune into the news because it's all too depressing that we have a liberty here in town and in Australia that's not shared anywhere else around the globe. So I am just so thankful that we can meet in person. It's awesome. And I've just noticed that I'm not holding the mic properly because I've been turned up. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> So yeah, if, uh, if this is your first time with us, <clears throat> um, the th- we've got a theme of finding real rest uh, throughout the whole of January. And we're hoping that it's not just a theme for January, that in the messages that we and others are going to present, that you'll find ways that you can enter into that rest daily and weekly. I mean, after all, our creator modelled rest. He understands the need for our rest. And uh, you'll see it throughout the whole of scripture, the place of rest. So last week, I'm just, I'm just curious, Bev spoke beautifully how we can find rest for our mind, body and soul in the beauty of creation. And so I'm a bit curious as to how many people have now looked out their window with fresh eyes, that when they take the dog for a walk, they're taking in the detail around them. Or have you gone for a walk down by the river and just sat and listened to the water running by, watch the ducks floating past. Has anyone, has anyone changed the way that they, that they engage with the world around us? I really hope you have because I'm, we're blessed with a, a great view from the front of our house and uh, after that I was just reminded that um, it doesn't take very long as I leave the front door to just stop and spend five minutes looking out on creation and just being blown away by the detail So many times we go out the door, we're head down, tail up, boom, in the car. Amazing how we get to work because we don't see half the things that are going on. That includes other drivers. Probably that's just me, but anyway. Um, But yeah, it it is. We rush and and we bustle and we wonder why we're stressed. Anyway, today I want to bring you another form of rest. And so I want to explore one that we can take with us wherever we go, one that we can share with others. So come with me as we explore rest in laughter. Now, by way of encouragement, my dear wife told our children at a recent family dinner that today wasn't going to be a proper preach or a real preach. Okay. So to me, I took that as, yes, well, let's do something different. So we're going to. So I'm going to call two volunteers. Lydia and Oliver, can you come back up here, please? See, the way it works is that I volunteer, they come up, there's no procrastination, there's no awkward shuffling of feet, looking at the floor, and people who know me best going, what's he up to now? But look, on the bright side, I've never thrown bricks at anyone, no heavy blocks, and never have I hit a cricket ball at anyone. I mean, who do that sort of thing anyway? I, I have not even gone there. Oh, so good to see you. So we're going to do a little experiment here, and I figured that since you blokes are newly married that I'm on a sure bet here. Now, the aim of the game here, and you've got 15 seconds each, is to make the other person smile. Rules of engagement. You are not allowed to touch the other person. You are not allowed to speak. The person who is trying to keep a straight face must look the other person in the eyes the whole time. You can smile. You can pull funny faces. But all those other things, they're out of bounds. So, ladies, as is tradition and is right, she'll go first. So, Lydia, you've got to try and make Oliver smile. Hang on a minute. You've got... I can't... It's only got 15 seconds. I can't even read my watch. Excellent work. So, starting right now, go. Ah! 
Yay, team. What was the time? It was only around about three and a half seconds. Good job. Okay, so that's a point to team Lydia. Right, Lydia. Now I can, hang on, turn around this so we can, so we can see your face. That's the way. I've seen you before. That's fine. Okay, we've got the time on the clock again. And go. Uh, uh, excellent. Thanks so much. You can take a seat. <laughs> well, I'm so pleased because um, if, if you guys didn't kind of fail in that area, I'd have to call into question your pass mark from Pastor Jeff and Pastor Rose preparation for marriage, but it's all good. It's all good. Let me just pray before we start. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful to be found in your presence this morning. We're thankful that you've called us by name that we are able to come apart, that we can rest in your presence. Father, we know that this is a place of healing, it's a place of restoration, and a place where you speak into our spirits, you lighten our burdens, and you fill us with joy. Father, I just ask this morning that you would anoint my words, that they would bring life, that they would bring peace, they'd be an encouragement, and that there would be hope to everyone who hears, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I thought it was actually pretty funny that someone should give me this subject to speak on. I mean, I'm rarely still witnessed by the number of laps I do around this lectern every time I'm allowed out the front, which is going to be obviously fewer and fewer times. And I'm told by more than one person that I laugh too much. So it, on the outset, it would appear that laughter and, and relaxation are at odds with one another. But bear with me and hopefully we'll see that laughter is not only good fun, it's essential to our well-being. It's good medicine, it's mood changing, it's atmosphere shifting, it's a life bringing wonder, and it's free. It does also produce the benefit of rest both physically and emotionally and spiritually as well. I mean, after all, if we weren't meant to laugh, God wouldn't have made us this way. Hopefully I've got a couple of memes coming up behind me on the screen. Oh, there we go. A couple of reflections from Christmas. Now, I reckon it's a day wasted that you don't learn something. And trust me, never ever buy your wife a tin opener for Christmas. It'll be memorable, all right, because she'll never let you forget. <laughs> oh, and this, this is my absolute favourite. I've now suddenly dawned on me why all our neighbours put their elaborate light display outside their house. One of our neighbours has actually gone to the next level and it's all the way around the house. And so now I know why I have every stray cat in the district in my backyard. So I think it's next year, lights outside, leave them on 365 days a year. Beautiful. Ah, uh, yes. Don't grow up, it's a trap. Fun fact, as children we laugh between 200 and, three, and 300 times a day, but as adults... It's down to an average of 17. What went wrong? Clearly the message is retain your inner child. I have. The challenge is just keeping the little terror under control. <laughs> and lucky last, ah oh yes, this is just, I saw this and I've gone, how good is this? You're never too old. And we had a big clean up at our house just recently. Found my skateboard, didn't I? So Bev, guess what? We're going to go there. <laughs> that should be awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs> Speaking of God making us, I was thinking that God made man and therefore dads, and thus he made dad jokes. Isn't that great? And speaking of dad jokes, I was thinking of the tradies and I thought, wouldn't it be great to make one about carpentry, but I'm not sure it'd work. It would work. Oh, look, I blew it. I blew it. I had one opportunity and I blew it. Ah. Oh. See, that's why I leave them alone. They're just fraught with disaster. <laughs> anyway, we can thank God literally for laughter. In Genesis 1.27, it tells us we're made in God's own image. We're made in his likeness after his own pattern. So it's safe to say that we laugh because God laughs. Does this also mean that God has a sense of humour? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. <clears throat> There we go. 
Now, I look at these and you've got to ask the question, why? And to be honest, it's God's got the reply of, because I can. I mean, the blobfish. I love this one because it just looks like a sad old man. And you think, if you were in his state, you'd have the same expression on your face, wouldn't you? I mean, he's got no skeleton. He's, he's, he's just made up of this, I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's very, a light, gelaginous mess and he just fills up with water and just floats around with almost little effort. There is an upside to everything. This fella here is like the closest thing to a real-life Pokemon you're ever going to get. Apparently, it's a poisonous sea slug that spends its entire life floating upside down, takes a big gulp of air, flips upside down, good to go. And this little bloke here is a hopper nymph, and the things at the the back of him are fibre optics. High tech, straight off the bat. I think we've got one more. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> so, so, the little critter on the far end is a star-nosed mole. <laughs> Who would look at that and go, yeah, I knew exactly what that was. Can't see a thing, doesn't need to. Those little tentacles on the end of his nose enabled him to even smell underwater. He can smell underground and doesn't need to know anything else. Proboscis monkey, big nose. Apparently, big noses attract females. It's not been my experience, but anyway. <laughs> and, and my favourite, the manda shrimp. I mean, you wonder where our cartoonists get their inspiration. God had it nailed long before anyone even put pen to paper. My favourite fun fact about this little bloke is the way that he hunts his, his food is he literally beats it to a pulp. He's got two little um, club-like mandibles that he can shoot out in front of him at over 80 kilometres an hour and do it so fast that apparently, and this is a bit they'll have trouble with, that the water around him or around the tips of his clubs momentarily reaches a temperature similarly to, similar to the surface of the sun. So, you know, it's one way to prepare it and cook it all in one go. God is just truly, truly amazing. So what is laughter? I like to think of it as a thrill of joy. Laughter being the physical expression of the joy inside us. Research states that joy is in fact a separate emotion which only enhances laughter because of our heightened state of positive emotion. I've done it again, haven't I? Sorry. I find it very hard to separate the two as they're so often found together and this is particularly so on the pages of scripture. One of the best examples that I've found is in Psalm 126, verses 1 to 3, reading from the NIV version. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said of among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Just evidence that, that out of that wellspring of joy that God puts in us is indeed laughter and the more I looked the more references I found in the Bible to laughter in fact it's about 40 depending on what translation you go with but even more importantly there's over 200 so there's evidence right there that our joy enhances our laughter why do we laugh (laughs) what are the benefits of laughter well, it's, it's beautifully expressed in Proverbs 17, verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And when I looked into the proven benefits of good, deep, regular laughter, I was just amazed. No wonder laughter is described as the best medicine ever. According to helpguide.org, laughter draws people together in ways that is both physically and emotionally beneficial to our body. Laughter strengthens our immune system, it boosts our mood, it diminishes pain and protects us from damaging effects of stress. We actually live longer. They did a study in Norway amongst a group of people that had a strong sense of humour and laughed often and they found that they they lived a significantly longer period of time and this was particularly so amongst the cancer patients that they tested. 
So nothing works faster, more dependably to bring our minds and bodies back into balance than a good laugh. And there's no nasty side effects. Humour lightens our burdens, it inspires hope, it connects us to others and it keeps us grounded, focused and alert. It also helps to release anger and forgive sooner. I mean, there's an absolute winner right there. What's not to like? And it sure sounds to me like something God planned for us all along. We can't feel anxious, angry or sad when we're laughing. Try it. It's just not going to happen. It changes our whole outlook. A good hearty laugh actually relieves physical tension, leaving our muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes. I was actually thinking about this and I thought, after one of those mad laughing sessions where you can hardly breathe, it takes you about 45 minutes to recover and that's usually best done lying around. Or is that just me? In her book, Switch on Your Brain, Dr. Karen Relief refers to laughing as internal jogging, increasing the flow of peptides and quantum energy. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? In our brain and body. Where's Rosemary? Best news ever. Internal jogging. Who knew? I think we're under a winner there. Sounds to me like you might not even have to leave your home. Dr. Leaf goes on to say that laughter really does deserve to be known as the best medicine ever. It releases an instant flood of feel-good emotions, of feel-good chemicals that boost our immune system. It reduces stress, dangerous levels of stress hormones, in fact. And best of all, it's fun, it's free, and it's easy to use, truly priceless. Right about now, I can hear someone saying, but James, I don't feel like laughing. You don't know my situation or my circumstances. And the last year I had, I can't even remember the last time that I laughed. I hear you. When I was preparing this message, I had time to reflect on a time in my life which I've worked very, very hard to forget. And it was just, it was a time, there's a a culmination of, of many, many things and I just allowed stress to run into anxiety and ultimately depression. And after what I've learnt in preparation for this, it doesn't surprise me at all that there was almost a complete lack of laughter during that whole period of time. And I know that there's going to be, there's going to be seasons for just about all of us, unfortunately, where laughter seems so far out of reach that it's almost impossible. Or other times where our situation makes it seem impossible inappropriate so we don't even bother going there but last year I'd have to say in 2020 I learned a very valuable lesson I've got a friend at work who I've known for about 30 years now and he's the sort of friend that you can talk to and you do talk to about absolutely everything and anything he's generally he's genuinely interested in people he's passionate about family and friends And he's never, ever refused to help anyone, to the best of my knowledge, who genuinely needs it. And that's all wrapped up into an uncommon level of emotional intelligence. He's a kind of friend that every single one of us needs and why he's so so loved at, at our workplace. Well, with COVID and working from home last year and, and everybody having um, mixed up routines, I hadn't spoken to him for quite a while and... I rang him one afternoon when I was actually working from home and asked him how he was doing. And he simply replied, I'm dying. Now, my next question was, why? What have you been doing? Because he's an active active guy, he's very social, and he has an enthusiasm for life that's hard to believe. So you never know what he's been up to. But his reply stopped me in my tracks. I was literally speechless. No, I'm actually dying. And he was very calm and matter-of-fact about it. I had no words and I told him so. And his reply was, I know, right? Pretty much how I responded to when the doctors told me the news. Over the next few months, he went through the full gamut of emotions, as you can imagine. Anger, frustration, disbelief, anguish and sadness. It's hard to imagine how he felt. Humanly speaking, tests don't get much tougher than these. And because of medical appointments and feeling unwell, he was absent from work quite a bit. And so it was a while till I got to speak to him again properly. In testament to his character, when I spoke to him next, his first words to me, it's not really about me anymore. This is going to be so much tougher on my family. 
There was no joy and no place for laughter anywhere on his horizon. And this is somebody who laughs so much and so frequently um, and so often, it's his greatest delight. He loves family beyond belief and he organises to get together with guys that are doing it tough at least a couple of weeks, a couple of times a week and he, he has a Friday night group where he used to meet at pubs and his, their wives used to ring him up and say thank you for taking them out and uh, getting them to function at a much better level. But for him, um, laughter has just become impossible. And so for him, he had to come to that place where he was able to give himself permission to laugh. And he's done just that. And you can share a joke with him now, and it's, it's really great because it, it's a good way to avoid awkward conversations. And I can see that it's genuinely lifted his mood and his demeanour. Now, a group of us pray for him particularly that he'll come to know Jesus, as well as healing. And we've already seen challenges to his diagnosis. And I, for one, remain really hopeful. <clears throat> Are you like my friend? Do you need to give yourself permission to laugh again? It's worth the effort. I've seen the truth of laughter's healing powers, both personally and in my friend's life. No matter what you're facing, it can and does make a lasting difference. When we give ourselves permission to laugh, we're stepping into the fullness of life that Jesus promises us. In John 10.10, 10, it tells us that I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. One of my favourite passages of scripture that demonstrates this fullness that Jesus promises in, is found in Genesis chapter 21, verses 6 to 7. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age? Most of us are familiar with that story, but it just speaks so much that God is always faithful and he sees through those promises that he makes. 90 years of age is a fair time in our age, in our lifespan to start having children. One of the best attributes of laughter is that it's contagious. People are drawn to laughter. When we laugh with others, everyone benefits. It's one of the reasons why they play laughter reels um, during sitcom television. It's a known fact that our brains are chemically wired. When we hear laughter, it's very hard to resist laughing ourselves. And smiles, as we saw, are contagious and they lead to laughter as well. It's true that laughter is much easier with others about But what happens when that's not possible? Well, let me introduce you to Gran. Gran is a legend in our household. All four of our children treasure the time that they spent with Gran, the memories that she imparted to them and the influence she had on their lives. We'll call her Gran because everyone did, to the point where I'm thinking most people actually forgot that she had a first name. The older she got, the more people used to call her Gran, including my own grandmother, which I thought was highly amusing because she was about 80 at the time. Now, Gran is Bev's grandmother. And to say that Gran was a dynamic character with a zest for life would be the classic understatement. Sadly, she's no longer with us, but she leaves an extensive legacy. She was a cancer survivor and widowed for over 30 years, so she was no stranger to living by herself and being by herself. Once when Bev asked her how she coped by being by herself, she simply said, you have to laugh every day. If no one's around, then you make yourself laugh. And trust me, Gran had some interesting approaches to that happening, including standing in front of the mirror and smiling at yourself. Now, I gave this a crack, you should do it, because it's a winner. You're guaranteed of somebody smiling back at you, and seriously, see how long you can smile deeply at yourself in the mirror without laughing. It's just good. Anyway, don't tell anyone about it, but just give it a go. One of the the ways that she used to make herself laugh is she would remember funny stories of all the mischief she got up to with her siblings when she was a younger girl. Now, she was one of ten and they lived on a farm, so you can just imagine some of the things they would have gotten up to. One of the funny stories she would often recount, and she enjoyed it (laughs) 
so much was a story relating to her sister Daisy learning to drive. Now, Daisy was told to put the car in gear and use the accelerator. Well, she sure did. Except for first, it was in reverse. She put the car straight through the back wall of the garage, kept the foot firmly planted on the accelerator, and miraculously managed to circumnavigate the paddock round and around and around, with yelling out as to what she was supposed to do next. I can remember the very first time I was told this story, and as much as some of the details are funny, I can't remember them, but I will never, ever forget Grand telling this story. Whenever she'd get to some of the funny parts, she would start laughing that hard that she'd be speechless. I just about needed oxygen, I could barely breathe, and that only spurred her on to greater heights. I didn't have the heart to tell her that it wasn't the story that was so funny, but man, oh man, the way she told it, um, you just never, ever forget it. This was grand to a T. She was a great storyer, storyteller, a great encourager. She loved Bev especially, and we're a great grandchildren's number one fan. Nothing phased Gran. I can remember one time when our son Daniel was just a little fellow and Gran was up visiting us uh, when we lived in High Street, as she often did. She used to come up and visit us a couple of times a day. She used to walk from Rankin Street when she was over 70 years old. So she was a doer, all right. Now, Dan was was standing next to her and he was playing with that loose skin that appears apparently after a certain period of time under your arm. And uh, he was just, uh, just... pulling on that and he was looking at it quite intently and if you knew my son you know that he was fairly serious at that stage of life and all of a sudden he just pipes up and he says to Gran I know what your problem is Gran your skin's not attached to your bones (laughs) now Gran just roared with laughter and I'm pretty sure that Daniel didn't understand what was so funny but to this day it remains one of his and our fondest memories Brad not to be outdone said to her one day Gran, you've got wrinkles. That means you're old. You're probably going to die soon. (laughs) Now, every grandmother loves their grandchildren, great-grandchildren included. But, hey, that's got to test even the best of us. But, no, she um, she just had a zest for life and that ability to literally live by her word and she did. She had one of the best sense of, of humour and proof positive that it does lengthen your life because she lived until she was 96 and she was rarely in hospital. I think about four times that I can think of in those years. One of them was to, for cancer surgery. One was to give birth to one of her three children. And then the other two times didn't happen until she was about 90 years of age. So that's, that's pretty good. There's many examples of how we can, we can bring laughter to each other and we were just reminded while we were on a, on a recent family holiday just how great ch- kids' animation movies are these days. Bev and I had been to the beach and we came back in to find Brad glued to the television. He discovered the Fox Kids movie channel. And it, if you've ever seen Brad watching a movie, it's just funny in itself. He's fixated. He's there like that. He had everything ready. He had his snacks. He's had his drinks. And we're coming in and we're, he's, he's oblivious to us. He's just on that mission. And I must admit, we, we saw back to back, over the hedge, open season one and two, the Croods movies. If you haven't seen these, you owe it to yourself. It's one of the best nights you'll ever have. doesn't matter how old you are, they are awesome. And it's something that Bev and I delight in is memes. I think when I, I think about memes, how Bev's grand would have delighted in memes. We send them to each other throughout the day and uh, my work colleagues often think that I'm, I'm a bit touched. I think it's probably got more to do than just the memes, but anyway. And I'll just burst out roaring with laughter and it'll be because of something Bev sent me. I can't share a lot of them with you here in church, unfortunately, but trust me, you want to investigate memes. They are gold. Laughter has been, has been proven to be such a great therapy that there are actually laughter therapy classes now. And I discovered that there's actually something called laughter yoga. Now, I'm pretty much sure that I've pioneered a form of yoga laughter because I do yoga and whenever anyone's watching, there's always laughter. <laughs> I'm certain that I'm doing the same thing as everyone else. But anyway, I could be wrong. 
One of the great examples of, of laughter therapy is, and the creativity of humanity, which further points that God made us, uh, is that during the whole of the COVID pandemic, across the globe, people have gone, what are we going to do? Well, we've got technology, so let's make home videos. So there's been literally a flood of funny short movies and videos and people sharing them across the internet. And I think, um, particularly in Europe, it's been the saving grace of many people's sanity. One of the things I've found most recently is CPAP laughter. I've got an ongoing battle with a CPAP machine. I've had it for four weeks. I've tried five face masks and so far we've established a firm love-hate relationship. I've discovered that when you get the headgear on, you get it all sorted and you think you're good to go. Like last night, for example, Bev said to me, that's brilliant, but you forgot to put your shirt on. Rip it all off and start again. It's awesome. And if you wake up during the night and you disconnect the air hose without turning the machine off first, it tries to pull your eyelids back over your head and it sounds like someone's turned on the vac next door. Trust me, your wife has suddenly becomes not your best friend. Anyway, if someone knows how to defeat one of those wretched things, let me know. <clears throat> I'll be all ears. It's clear to me that God has blessed us with the ability to reduce stress, limit anxiety, improve our mental and physical health, relax, feel good and have fun all at the same time in laughter. We have the ability to overcome things that would so often rob us of that precious rest. Le laughter is an active rest that restores and renews us. Real rest that deepens and enriches our life experience. I'd just like to leave you with three thoughts and I hope you find them encouraging. I'm sure everyone can read it, but I've got a little whisper at the front, read it out. There's literally nothing better than when you're full on barely laughing with someone and you both keep adding things that make it funnier than you, and you can barely breathe. I, I love this. Is, I don't know if everyone else does it, but I do and I think it's just absolutely sensational. There we go. Best advice ever, last until your belly hurts and then just a bit more. And lucky last, oh, there we go. Can't beat the peanuts. A smile is a sign of joy. A hug is a sign of love, a laugh is a sign of happiness, and a friend like me, well, that's just good taste. And, you, and, and this is not about me, you can say that about yourself. It's great encouragement. <laughs> it's great encouragement. I'd just like to read a portion of Psalm 16 for you. I was just thinking about the place of, of joy and the laughter that we enjoy that springs out of it, and that joy that we so much delight in is the joy that God puts inside us through his spirit. And I think that it really should have an outward working in praise to our creator and, and nobody expresses that better than King David. So just a couple of verses from Psalm 16, starting at uh, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he's right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. And that just encouraged me greatly. And I hope it's an inspiration to you too that we have a joy in us that is not dependent on our situation and circumstances that enables us to find laughter in times where we otherwise wouldn't be able to. And God knows how much we are able to delight in the, the gifts that he gives us. I'd just like to, to pray now. Seth, if you wouldn't mind coming up, and that would be great. Oh Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you love us so completely, you know us so intimately and your design and plan and purpose for our life is just so perfect and so complete. When I look around 
the world that you've created for us to live in. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. It's diverse. It's incredible. And it captures our imagination. And you made it just for us. Lord, I just thank you that the fingerprints of heaven are all over your creation. I mean, whether we know, have known you for a long time or we're meeting you for the first time today, there's no denying that, that man didn't make what we see around us. And laughter is further evidence. Something so simple, so much fun, but so incredibly powerful. It brings healing, it brings joy, it brings life. It sustains us, it encourages us, it lifts us up, it protects us. Who else could design something so perfect and so amazing as laughter? None but you. Lord Jesus, my prayer for each and every one of us is that we will come to know that joy that only you give. Father, we know that the true joy is the joy that you place inside us. And Father, you design us so perfectly that your gifts are for everyone, but you desire above all else to know us intimately and that we would know you just as we are fully known by you. This morning, if this is your first time and that you have met with God, can I encourage you to invite him in? It'll be the greatest decision that you ever make. God wants to lift you up. He has a plan for best life, a life you can't even imagine. You might think that your life is pretty good right now, but the hope that he brings, knowing that the unknown He's already been there. He's gone ahead of you. He's mapped it out. He knows what awaits you. And he's there to hold you, to walk beside you. And he looks behind you so that you don't have to because he's always got your back. So can I encourage you that if God's speaking to you this morning, just allow that still small voice room and space and take it in. All it takes is an invitation. Ask him to come into your heart. It's as simple as, Lord Jesus, I love you. I thank you for loving me. Lord, I know I've messed up, I've made mistakes. I've sinned and I've fallen short of the plan that you have for me. But you don't care. You love me anyway. Lord, I thank you for loving me. Lord, I thank you for saving me. Lord, I ask you that you would be with me all the rest of the days of my life. That I would serve you. And that you would be my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or if you're on somewhere on your journey and you'd love us to pray with you, then please get in touch. If you're online, there's ways you can get in touch with us via our website. You can, cont- you can call us. But if you're here this morning and you need prayer for anything, then please don't make the mistake of walking out of the door without coming to God in prayer, and we'd love to pray with you. That's one of the reasons why he calls us apart. This is a time of ministry. And we should, none of us leave the same way that we came in.